Good evening. Uh, tonight we devote this class to figure drawing and we will also consider two aspects of this work, how to catch uh, proportions and movement while drawing the figure. When um, the artist draws a model and in front of his or her there is a canvas or a piece of paper, immediately a um, wide range of tasks open in front of the artist uh, that you, you, the artist cannot immediately solve at once. So you need to work step by step, devoting your time to each task separately. And so our first task is composition. Composition or else, in other words, the placement of the figure in the format that you have. Whatever the format you have is, either a square or a tangular form, you have to fit the drawing in the frame of the space so that you didn't have the feeling of emptiness and at the same time the figure felt itself comfortable. And so we start from, uh, let's say, placing the big masses that are the height and the uh, width of the figure. So imagine that you're a sculpture. Like Michelangelo, you have a piece of marble and you need to uh, make a, a human figure out of this piece of marble. And so the first uh, movement of yours would be to cut off uh, the marble according to the size of the height and the width of the figure you imagine. In my case, this will be the, uh, let's say, size for my figure. In the lower line defines the lowest point of the feet, the upper line defines the highest point of the head. At this point, we're not uh, interested in details at all. We're just focused on big masses, torso, rib cage, uh, waist and head, legs and head. А не было бы вам легче начинать с рисования головы, а не ног? No, because you first need to understand the overall size. If you, for example, start with the head and the head doesn't fit the size and the measurement you have. In that case, you, can, you risk not to compose the whole figure because the measure of the head doesn't fit the overall idea. Первая задача – это композиция. Мы должны вставить фигуру в формат. И потом дальше в этом, в этой большом, в этом большом силуэте мы определяем более маленькие силуэты. So first you need to define the big silhouette of the overall body. Inside this big silhouette, then you start defining the separate pieces of the human body. No, but she's not starting from the legs. She, she if you see, has, uh, the, let's say, sketched the whole silhouette of the whole body, not of the leg. Imagine, again, the piece of marble. You need to cut off unnecessary parts. In this, uh, in this space, defined by the silhouette, we look for the um, average points, midpoints, especially of the um, rib cage, uh, hips, and then head.
мягкие касания, можно даже кистью. For this stage, I uh, suggest you to use a very soft touch, very soft lines, and perhaps you can even help yourself with a brush um, with the powder of the material you're using in order to have a quite moldable and mobile uh, trace that can be corrected easily, by, basically. задача сделать живой набросок. То, как, как мы воспринимаем эту форму живо, движение, направление торса, направление плечевого пояса, направление бедер, живой набросок. Mm -hmm. So now at this point you focus on the so-called lively sketch. So you have to kind of catch the movement, the direction, the character of the form and try to render it on your paper, on the form of the body, of course.
А можно сфотографировать? Yes. Sorry, do you have a piece of uh, paper, a tissue, whatever, for Svetlana? Yes. Si, si, grazie. Um, also, I want to uh, draw your attention again to the fact that um, the first traces of uh, the sketch need to be so smooth, so soft, that um, it would be possible to move them just with a, uh, with a tissue, with a piece of paper, to erase them, to soften them even more. So uh, try to think in, in terms of big masses and try to um, represent in space these big masses in their three-dimensionality, so with their directions and So once we have, we are fine, we, we like uh, our overall, let's say, figure uh, silhouette, the proportions are correct and we can switch to the, set, to the third stage, then we can also switch to a new material which can be a little bit sharper and uh, more intensive than the one we just used in order to um, place in this um, figure, in this first sketch, uh, let's say, active points. And so the drawing starts, uh, begins to become more, you know, sharper and more concrete.
головной размер, головной к формату. Мы можем внутри пятна головы посмотреть маленькие силуэты. Силуэты на лица. So once um, now I've been defining things, right? So I've reached a stage in which the concrete size and silhouette of the face is fine for for me. So at this point, you can already dive into the space of the face itself and focus on the smallest silhouette silhouettes that are uh, inside.
более конкретную пропорцию грудной клетки. Таза, шеи и плечевого отверстия. At this point, I will be defining um, and working more concretely on the size and proportions of the rib cage, and at the same time, because they are uh, confining parts of the neck and of the hips. So the proportions of a tall person standardly uh, would be eight times his or her head. So in in this case, our model is quite tall, and uh, therefore we will apply this rule. And um, the size of the head, by size of the head, I mean the highest point of the skull with the lowest point of the chin. That would be my measurement that needs to fit eight times in the body. And trying to exclude the height of the hair. So I'm interested in the skull. Double checking this size fits a time, therefore I can keep this measure. I have a question. Um, what if the model is like, like, no, like my height or shorter? Mm -hmm. model, taller, actually. Or what if the model is higher or lower? The high person, eight heads. The low person, six, seven heads. Compare it. Then you just measure. You just check yourself how many heads in the specific body fit overall. Okay. Would I still be eight? eight? Uh, she says that uh, for uh, uh, smaller people it, would, it can be seven or for very small and even kids six. I mean it really depends. Okay. That is a very standardized kind of Yeah, I would I would assume that is around between seven and eight, right? The standard, but of course you can always. Um, on this, do, do you know this? The pelvis bone, these two yeah. bones here that it's you. Like, it's like this long. It's like that. Yeah, no, but you, you know, there are two bones, so two exact points, and that axis will cross them like this. And they are very exact, very precise. It are two precise bone, bones. The, the, the top, let's where, say. Where Exactly. So the, the extreme left and right points of the bones, the, the things that you actually feel on yourself, the, that would be the cross line. I thought the pelvic bone on the model is just two, about two inches below the belly button, but she drew the line much lower than the belly button. So I was wondering, like, it's more the, the line that she Mm -hmm. um, there, it's more on the top of the thigh than the pelvic bone. Okay, let's ask her just to show it on the model, right? Yeah. So it will be more easier for you to understand. Svetlana, можете, пожалуйста, у модели показать, где вот эта центральная линия? Да, можно. Скелет возьмем. Okay. Можно скелет. 
uh, I, I will take, we will take the skeleton so oh, that okay. it will be easier to. Okay. This is classic standard proportions. But each person, each person has his or her own specific features, okay. so she said. So that's usually, the top of the thigh is usually the middle axis, that's the... Entry. Yes, this okay. one. Okay, top of the yeah. thigh and the lower of the thigh. Важно то, какую задачу вы себе ставите. Если вы ставите задачу непропорционального человека нарисовать похоже, то вы должны сделать замеры и сделать... И учесть его собственное телосложение. Либо вы можете держать в голове классические пропорции mm -hmm. человека и делать свой рисунок более идеальным, классическим. Mm -hmm. Ага, значит, и ее вопрос был просто относительно именно модели. То есть у модели мы брали именно эти. Нам повезло, mm -hmm. нам наша модель имеет классические красивые mm -hmm. пропорции. So, um, you, you know, it really depends on what's your aim. If your aim is to replicate classical proportions and in a way the harmony of the classical proportion body, then you stick to the standard things, right? Uh, if your aim is to replicate the exact uh, features of the model, if the model is not super proportionate, then you will have to measure. So um, we have defined the exact proportions of the rib cage, of the hips, pelvis area, of the upper part of the legs, and of the lower parts of the legs. And um, you place the, this big masses, these parts of the human body, in the direction, in the spatial direction that you see on the actual model. So they will not be in a front, a total frontal uh, kind of uh, form. They will have a direction. In this case, the model uh, is putting all her weight on one leg. So her axis is a little bit shifting, right?
находится на оси, которая проходит через большой версию бедренника. So here on the on this exact same uh, place that we've been talking about, and that is in on the model, there is the axis that divides the body into two. Now we will ask the model to stand on both legs, please. Mm. And uh, the center of the figure is placed parallel with the surface, right? In a, let's say in the axis would be parallel to the surface where she's standing. Also in this position, the axis that would cross the uh, bottom points of the rib cage and the two points of the clavicles would also be parallel with the surface. The center of the, her mass uh, would be basically starting we, in this point, so the pit of the neck, and continues down to the bottom, keeping all the time in the exact center between the two legs, right, in, in this position. As soon as the figure changes her position, and she puts all her weight on one leg only, as it was before. Please, can you go back to the previous? Now you have a change of the axis. The mid-axis also has an angle. You see that uh, this axis changed its position. The same thing with the axis of the rib cage also changed position. The hip uh, turned this way, this way. The rib cage. Uh, on the other way, so they meet on our uh, left point, left side. They do this this movement, right? And it is the correct representations of this axis that, in our drawing, create movement. So how we should um, represent it? How, how can we show, how can we give the impression of movement? How can we achieve this? For this, uh, we have listed some so-called key points or anchor points. And those anchor points are the points where you should put accents in the drawing with your pencil, with the material you're working. And at the same time, those points are also the two extremes for an axis to cross them through. So in the representation of the skull are this forehead uh, bone, the forehead bone. The upper point of the orbit of the eye Ось, 
Then we have an axis that crosses, that, let's say, that passes on the bridge of the nose and crosses the eyes. The base, bases of the nose. The angles of the lips. The lower part of the chin. All these points I mentioned. All these points I mentioned are so are pair points. You know there are two of them that are placed in a symmetrical way according to an imaginary central vertical line that cuts the body into two halves. And so by representing uh, and placing these points in the right uh, position, also taking into account the angle and perspective uh, according to the line of the horizon, then we are able to show movement of the head, of course. The same thing happens with the movement or the torso and of the legs. One, so for the torso, we have the two points of the clavicle. Then the bottom part of the rib cage. And uh, the rib cage is a form that uh, is very compact, very unified. The rib cage itself is not, um, it does not move. So these two axes, the upper and the lower one of the rib cage, cannot, uh, let's say, part from each other. They always keep parallel. It is like a little box uh, with, whose axes, of course, keep all the time parallel, but the box itself can, can move in space. So that would be our torso. So we keep going with the lively sketch. I, I talked about movement, and the movement can be rendered with the correct position of the axis. Uh, at the same time, you have to always keep in mind the midline of the body, the vertical midline of the body. Uh, so, um, thinking about the uh, rib cage as a little box, also the midline, so the line that divides the rib cage into two equal halves vertically, always will be the same, even if this little box moves in space. Also, the hips uh, can be considered a little box that move in space. And the key points for the, uh, for the hips area will be these points we were talking about that you can feel the, pup yes, the pelvis bone um, uh, tops. And then the next two pair points are the upper part of the femur bone. These two big forms. Uh, are the two little boxes that move in space and their internal axes will keep parallel to each other. Ich mid line the same. And we keep drawing, keeping these things in mind. And our aim, once again, is movement. 
the proportions are more or less already fixed there. Uh, we have checked with one eighth of, with the measurement of the height of the facial part of the skull. Отрезочек это нижняя часть тела, да? Then um, let's now go further down. We concentrate on the legs. The the legs, um, the midpoint, the horizontal mid axis of the legs will cross the knee cups of both legs. This two here. And that axis will be parallel to the uh, upper axis, right, of the femur bone. Освещается светом. А, смещается. Of course, drawing um, uh, the midline, as you can see, I follow the volume of the body. I, it's not a straight vertical line, right? The same thing with the other midline of the lower part of the body. And overall, it is very important to know and to represent the direction of big masses. And now we can fix, we can put accents on the key points along this axis we've been talking about. This axis imaginarily keep going in a parallel, uh, let's say, movement, taking into account the line of, ho of the horizon.
the neck is like a cylinder
uh, now I'm looking at how the light uh, is placed on these big forms, how the light falls and what are the enlightened parts. Mm -hmm. Can you please inhale to let us see your rib cage? Yeah. And then exhale, of course. <laughs> Can, can you please again try once again? Cool. Yeah, like this, we see very easily our skeleton scheme. On. Um, the most of your work should be on this um, 
areas where the plane, when one plane meets each other, but those that are closer to you. So, for example, the, uh, mm, the arm on our left side is um, a little bit more in mid-tone. It is not so enlightened as the left shoulder. And uh, for what concerns the rib cage, we have two planes. One that is placed a little bit more horizontally to the source of light, which is the one starting with the neck down. And then after we have this um, other plane that goes towards the, the belly bottom that is not so vertical towards the source of light, so it will have another tone.
that little square, that little uh, plane is uh, um, directly receiving light. It's leaning towards horizontality, whereas downwards it dives into uh, mid-tone. Somewhere there is also some shadow. These two legs are placed on different planes, different surfaces. One goes back from us in mid-tone and shadow, whereas the right one comes towards us and, ten, and tends towards horizontally. Therefore, it receives quite, uh, you know, more light. And uh, so, with the help of anchor points and the accents on anchor points, and with the help of, help of tone, we show um, masses in movement. So remember that um, in drawing, in order to um, render movement and masses and movement, we have to uh, check anchor points. Everything builds upon them. Also, thanks to those little accents on the anchor points, we can um, catch better uh, the proportions of the body. And movement. Also through the help, with the help of axes that cross through these anchor points. Thank you. Thank you to the model.